Thank you, everybody. Um, I have these slides online, and it's filled with links and validators and specifications. Uh, so if you want to follow along, the URL is jimbir.ch slash meta dash schema dash WP. Um, and they'll be up forever afterwards. Um, today we're talking about uh, meta and schema um, and how we can apply these standards in WordPress. Um, I'm Jim Birch. You can follow me at the Jim Birch. I am a tech lead at Canopy Studios. Uh, we're a fully distributed agency um, with no office. We're all working uh, from wherever we want, which is why I get to live on Cape Cod. Uh, and we do uh, WordPress and Drupal uh, support and development. Uh, so we know how our website looks on our own web server when we visit it in a browser. It's what we work on most days, right? Um, but what happens when our website's content leaves our web server and starts getting placed on other people's content? Here's the big six, Facebook, LinkedIn, Bing, Google, Pinterest, and Twitter. Um, and they're all displaying my homepage for this presentation a little bit differently. Uh, of those big six, uh, Google has a near monopoly of all web search volume. Um, market share of uh, Google, Google Images, and YouTube uh, far outweigh, far, far, far outweigh the realities of search on Bing, Amazon, Facebook, DuckDuckGo, you know, and whatever small little search engines are out there. And on Google, what happens when they stop sending people to your website and start answering their users' questions inside their product? So what is WordPress used for? You know, if somebody's just looking for that answer, they get the paragraph right away. What time is it? This is the first search on Google that returns no search results from the web. Timeanddate.com is pretty upset about that. Um, who won the Mega Millions? Uh, how do you cook corn? Um, is there an electrician near me? Who's Abraham Lincoln? Who's on Mush Ru Mount Rushmore? Um, what are the best WordPress plugins? Might be something that's appropriate in this room. You get a whole list of items. Uh, how do I get from here to there? And what happens when there's only one search result? Um, as more and more people use search devices, uh, that go by voice, um, they're only getting one answer back. Uh, telling these services and telling Google uh, what your data is using metadata and structured markup is the way forward. Um, so here's my bio on Canopy's website. You know, just a little breakdown of like as I was content modeling this to put it into the site. Um, what each of these things are, we can set these up as schemas and metadata. You know, so we, you know, we know I'm a person. I have a job title. Uh, the same as links is my locations on GitHub and LinkedIn and Facebook and Twitter. Um, I have an image. I have awards, uh, articles, and images at the bottom. Location, some things I know about, and we'll get into that in a little bit. So we want to be the structured data heroes that we know we can be. Okay, there's gonna be some more cat gifts too. So. <laughs> okay, the bottom line up front, too long didn't read. We're gonna go through these metadata specifications. And then once we know how to set up these specifications, we're gonna use these tools to validate it. Because uh, there's only one thing worse than no structured data, and it's the wrong structured data. Um, <clears throat> So we'll go through the metadata first. Uh, meta means after from Greek, um, or beyond, it's prefix used to indicate the concept of an abstraction behind another concept used to complete or add to the latter. And that's my little Lego guy that my nephew made for me with me in the background there, like that's kind of meta. Um, this is the most meta image on the internet. It's a card in a card catalog that describes a book which is about the card catalog. 
Um, it used to be people's jobs to manage this metadata. Uh, here's a picture from the Library of Congress in the 1910s or 1920s. It's kind of unknown. Um, those are all library cards, you know, Dewey Decimal Systems and people actually typing them up. Um, sometime in the 70s and 80s, this was moved to the digital realm. Uh, this is a picture of Dynex, uh, an early but popular long-lasting online catalog, uh, which put this lovely old lady out of business. So the first thing in metadata is the specification. Uh, the World Wide Web Consortium, the W3C, they define the rules for the internet, basically, that Safari, Chrome, Internet Explorer all agree to. And the W3C has a specification of, let's get out of here, what goes into the metadata. They define every little piece of information in there, give examples of what it is. It's pretty stiff and forward, um, but it's not a secret. We can go in and look at it. Uh, there are only five little pieces of metadata. Uh, the head, which where we, it opens and closes and we define what we can put in there. Uh, it's not rendered on the page, it's just for the machine that's going to read it. The title tag, this is the most important piece for uh, all of uh, the sites that are going to consume and your visitors. Um, it's in the head, it opens and closes, and it is the title of your page. It should be unique to only this page. The base, uh, not that important. If you wanted to set a base link or a base URL, um, you could use this. Uh, link allows us to extend uh, into other things like link to style sheets or link to images. Uh, style tags, we can put CSS style in line. And that brings us to the meta tag. Um, it's a singular tag and it's for anything that can't be expressed in those other four tags. Um, it uses name and value pairs. Uh, so we name it and then give it a value, um, and it can only be used in the head. When I mean name value, uh, this is the most important thing about metadata. Um, you have a name, like description, and then a value, the content that comes after it. So in this case, I give my meta tag a name, the description, and then I give it my teaser. And this is like what shows up on Google in the teaser, um, Facebook on the card, uh, that kind of thing. There are only a few standard metadata names, and most of them are not used at all. Application name, author, generator, keywords, refer. Nobody really uses much of this stuff. The most important one here is description. Um, there's some pragma directives. This tells the machine that's rendering your uh, page uh, certain things like what content type it is, what language it is, um, really not used for SEO or anything. Um, but there are other metadata names. Uh, the WC3 is a slow moving ship. They get together every few years, it's very academic. Another group came out of uh, the W3C, kind of like a splinter group about data nerds, and they were like, we need to move faster and have rules about you know, what things can be named, uh, and they called themselves the Web Hypertext Application Technology Working Group, Whew. the WUTWUG, and they came out and they made their own rules where you can have a application, I want to have these specific meta tag names, and they will define them and say, nobody else can use these names. And then they publish the list on the, their website. Uh, and this list is pretty big. Uh, this first AALGS terms, it's the Australian government, uh, has a huge open source data policy, and they have their own meta language systems. Uh, Apple has their own uh, app stores, Blazor something, Bugzilla, um, citations, if anybody works in academia. Um, if you have uh, publications, citations, there are meta tags. Uh, geolocation, the list 
just on and on and on and on and on and on and on. So depending on what field you're in, what content you're in, uh, you can come on this list and find out what metadata tags you could do. You can make your own meta tags if you need to. Um, something you could do in WordPress is to put your categories into a meta tag or put your tags into a meta tag. Um, it doesn't do anything to anybody else, but maybe you can consume them. Like I've used uh, custom search engines that have uh, weighted versions of a software based on the meta tag. So we had like chapter one would be weighted heavier than chapter two, um, or category one could be weighted heavier than the other seven categories. Once you've implemented your meta tags, you need to test them to see if they're valid. Uh, the W3C has a developer tool, and even though like, they don't define all those WTWEG meta tags, they will verify them. So let me go over here. Um, so they have these cool tools. You can check your links, you can check your RSS feed, your CSS, um, basically everything. We'll do the unicorn test, which is kind of like everything all at once. Let's grab my URL. Throw it in here. And come in here and see what an awesome web developer I am. Um, but basically, if there's any errors in my meta tags, they will display it here. Um, and you can actually grab this code and like build it yourself if you manage your own server. Um, you could actually check your validation on your own website as you go, which is pretty cool too. Okay, uh, back to the important stuff. What does Google care about? Uh, you know, it used to be a guessing game. These days, it's not. They tell you exactly what they're looking for. So in Search Console help, there is a page that basically says what meta tags Google Search can consume. Um, they tell you where they're looking for it and e what each of the tag do does. So the description, title, robots, or Google bot directly. Um, if you don't want Google to put uh, your search in the search results, you can say notes, site, link, search box, or don't translate it. Um, verification, refresh, viewport, and content type. So there aren't many that Google's paying attention to on the metadata side. There they are. What does Facebook care about? Facebook created a metadata language applied to the WhatWeg called Open Graph Protocol. Uh, they've open sourced this. Uh, you can check it out at ogp.me. Um, but this is the first thing uh, that was introduced that really turned a page into a rich object on the open graph uh, of Facebook. Um, so instead of just having a URL that was a page, this page became a book or a person or a song or a movie. Um, there are requirements. You have the title, which you've already had, so you just b basically duplicate your page title into the OG title. You have the type, which they define. You select which one, like in this case, a video, movie. Um, it's an image. Every page or every rich object on the graph should have an image URL that represents the object. Uh, and then the URL, this is the canonical URL, where does this page live? There are six specific types, music, video, article, book, profile, and website. Once you have created your uh, open graph meta tags, you can debug them or review what it actually looks like. Uh, Facebook has a debugger. Uh, Pinterest has a validator. Um, you can also go to other services like LinkedIn and put it in there. Uh, LinkedIn doesn't have a specific validator, but you can force them to go refetch the page if you put a gobbledygook like a J J J J J question mark at the end of your URL. Um, 
Let's look at the Facebook debugger. So if we go put this URL in, it went down, it tells you any errors, and then tells you what they fetched, where they fetched it, how many people like it, um, what the card or will actually look like in the open graph, and then the raw data that they scraped. So right now, the description, the image, the title, the URL, and what time it was that they grabbed it. Um, so this is pretty cool too. If you share something and like you spelled something wrong or you didn't get the right image in there, you can come back to this page and ask them to scrape it again maybe a couple times to totally clear their cache. Um, it's not a thousand percent foolproof, like your CEO may still see it on their computer or their phone, um, but anybody who would share it in the future from that point would get a new one. Not to be outdone, Twitter created their own language called Twitter Cards. Um, and this was to create rich photos, videos, and media experiences to tweets, uh, helping to drive traffic to your site. Uh, instead of having the object model, they just came up with the card style. Um, so they have the summary card, which is just a small little tab with a small image on the left. You have the summary with large image, which is probably what most people want. It's gonna give you the most real estate in your Twitter feed. That's the large image. A player card, if it's like an app or a game, or sorry, if it's a player card is for uh, audio or video, and then app card if it's an app or a game. Uh, they also have a validator. Uh, you just have to sign in and head on over there. Uh, there's the spec. And here is the validator. Throw in the URL and they'll show you the preview that it will look something like this. So there are no guarantees from Twitter, but usually it looks like that. All right, implementing meta tags in WordPress. Uh, WordPress has plugins, and uh, there's a couple of them. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we heard a great presentation about the Yoast SEO plugin. This is by far the easiest and most common to implement. Um, and thanks to Vanessa's site for being our demo here. Um, basically, you can set uh, slugs or tokens. You know, take your title and put it in to the title. You know, you can use your excerpt, uh, excerpt as the meta description, or you can overwrite those on a post by post basis. Um, they also give you global defaults where you can set up your Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, uh, Google Plus as of today. Sorry. <laughs> Guess I need to update my slide deck now. Um, you know, with the Twitter, you can choose that you want the summary with large image card. Um, you know, choose the other one if you don't have images. Um, and there's countless other plugins that do the same thing. Uh, before there was a big thing, we'd go and we'd set meta tags in themes. So we have these PHP variables. You know, you don't need the huge power of Yoast or anything like that. You can basically just in your WP head, you know, set your own meta tags. Um, the last time I gave this presentation in, in the WordPress style uh, was for WordCamp for publishers. And I gave, uh, these examples that I wanted to keep in, uh, really in-depth uh, metadata from the Wall Street Journal. Um, they have a few standard meta tags, um, author description keywords, uh, robots, you know, they don't want the uh, open directory project or no archive project, uh, which are kind of old tags, which languages it's in, the referrer. Um, you know, these are unique and detailed on every single article page. Uh, they have their Facebook uh, app ID uh, and Facebook page IDs at the top. And then here are all their open graph tags. Which image, uh, which type, it's an article, the image specifications, the width, the height. Um, 
the locale. So if you change to uh, you know the Canadian Wall Street Journal, you get different content there. Um, the site name, the title, the description, the URL. Uh, same thing for the Twitter cards. Um, in this case, they include their site and the domain. Uh, they also include the author's uh, Twitter profile. Um, that's a summary with large image, um, where the image is, the description, the title. Um, they're including some uh, RDFA, which is kind of like an old speci older specification of metadata uh, that has these uh, dates, time published. Uh, again, here's the description, the image, basically maybe for different consumers of their app, uh, of their different apps that can consume their articles. Um, they have their app and Google News tags. Uh, so the news keywords is consumed by Google News, a different uh, consumer of articles. Uh, the Apple iTunes app is a cool one. Uh, you ever open an article on your phone and had a little banner at the top that said, hey, you should download our app? That can be meta tag driven. So Apple lets you do that. Um, and then the iOS URL, you know, what is the URL to launch that app? Uh, here are some custom tags. Uh, so I've looked all over. This CXNS parse is a ad generating thing, evil pop up thing. Um, uh, but basically, it has that name and the value. So you have the unique names on the left hand side and the content on the right hand side. Um, so this makes sense to somebody. Uh, but it also like go through that validator as perfectly acceptable. And then some custom tags. I couldn't figure out where these were, but maybe like their search engine or their sitemap builder or something is going to come in and consume these tags. So they have user type. I was a non-subscriber. Um, user exp default. Um, and then this looks like you know structure, some kind of sitemap, which section I was in, what content format I was in, which source. You know, maybe this is reporting back to their analytics. Who knows? And it goes on and on and on. You know, they can really get in-depth examples of what you know you can put into your metadata. You know, just as long as something else is going to be consuming it. So that's it. <laughs> Can't really see, but he's also on the computer there. <laughs> and that's it for metadata. Uh, do you want to ask any questions now, or go to the end, or? Okay, we'll go to the end. But now, we'll talk about schema. This is where we're gonna get really nerdy. Okay, so schema.org is a collaborative community um, which gets together to create, maintain, and promote schemas for structured data on the internet, web pages, email messages, and beyond. Uh, basically, you know, a bunch of people from Google and Microsoft and, and a bunch of big corporations get together to like set out again with these working definitions. They create proposals, they discuss them, they tweak them, they put them up for review, and then eventually like they merge them in. Um, the most commonly used schemas are creative works, you know, books, movies, recipes, um, objects, images, videos, uh, events, healthcare, organization. People, um, it's basically like the greatest people, place, or thing game that like you could ever play at this point. And if like you lose, then you can just make a proposal to say, "I need this new thing," or "I need this new place." Um, it's like metadata um, that it has a name. Uh, so, like in this case. We're going to say, talk about this sports team. So in this inline example, we define our scope as being a schema.org sports team. Um, the cool factor is that schemas can be nested. So like metadata is all in line. It was only about that article. If I needed to have multiple things, I kept on having to add more and more tags. Uh, in this case, this sports team has a name. And the name is the New England Patriots. Uh, and then we, sports team, also has a member. Uh, 
the member has a role and ooh, it's getting serious <laughs> um, this person or this member of the organization is a person and his name is Tom Brady uh, in this member organization role uh, Tom Brady had a start date uh, and an end date and a role name so he's the quarterback so inside of this like I could have all of the players on the New England Patriots in all of their roles I could add more data to Tom Brady uh, going down um, and depends on how many schemas how much depth and who needs to consume this um, this is that RDFA. Uh, this is just another way of marking up the vocabulary is schema.org and it's a type of um, this method is kind of dated. Uh, what has really won out on the internet is JavaScript object notation for linked data, JSON LD, um, which it's JavaScript, but it's not that scary. Um, basically, it's kind of the same thing. We're going uh, what context is our JavaScript for object notation for linked data? It's schema.org. And then it's the type, sports team, name, Patriots, member, and then members get these brackets, and we open up, and we can bracket inside of each. And after you look at it a dozen times and put it through validators, it makes sense uh, eventually. Um, but same thing, basically, name, values. Um, so why are we doing this? What does Google care about? Google tells us exactly what they care about uh, in their help docs. Let's go to bang. Okay, uh, the Google search is now a product of Google's. Uh, so they've created this Google search guide on developers.google.com. Uh, and in this guide, they have their features of the Google search product. Um, and you can go through and go through articles and what they look like on the page. Books. And when you mark up a book right, it gets this markup on the right. You get into specific site features like breadcrumbs. So if you mark up your breadcrumbs on your site right, you get these extra little three uh, green links inside of Google search results. Um, you know, law of averages say that if there's more links to your site on Google search results, then more people will click on it. If your search result is bigger on Google search results than the other sites there, people will click on it. So it's good to have more real estate there. Um, the carousel, uh, this can be recipes, articles, how to get in there. Uh, corporate contacts, so if anybody here works for a business or is a business, you can have that knowledge panel on the right hand side and have the correct information there. Um, and the list goes on and on, and inside of each one you have, oh this is a fun one, fact check, are any fake newsers out there? Um, you can click into each one, they give examples, the world is flat, um, no it's not you know here's the markup and we get into the structured data testing tool later um, but basically the show gives you examples of like what the markup would look like if you wanted to implement this tag and then you can test it and come down here and see it <coughs> bless you um, so in that there's things that every website needs. Uh, the breadcrumbs I spoke about, uh, under the organization schema uh, for Google, you can have your corporate contact, basically all your company's information, uh, your logo, and your social pro profile. This is schema same as. Um, so basically this is your company on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, GitHub, anywhere else. Uh, the fact that your website is a website, so these days, not every URL on the internet is an actual website. So defining your website as a website is a good thing to do. And if you have a website and it has search, 
nested underneath your website, you can tell Google uh, you know, how to search on your site. So if you go to, if you search Google for YouTube, you always get the search box right there, right? If Google feels that somebody's looking for your website and wants to search on it, they will put that search box in there if you define it for them. The content type specific schemas, um, these are where you get into your WordPress custom post types. Um, sometimes a page could be one of these, um, but basically that big list that Google says, they want articles, books, courses, reviews, data sets, events, fact check, job posts, live streams, businesses, uh, medias, actions, occupation, podcast, products, uh, Q&A pages, recipes, reviews, software, uh, speakables, a good one. Um, so if, hey Google or hey Siri were to select your page as the number one result, um, you can actually define which content on that page you would like Google to read, um, whether it be like a class or a div inside of your code, or if you wanted to uh, give them something unique. Uh, if it's a subscription or if it's paywalled content um, for people that charge to get into their website, uh, top places and videos. There are new uh, beta features being added all the time. Uh, two weeks ago on the Google Webmaster Central blog, Google announced how to put the schema dates in that they want to read. So. Um, date published and date modified and they gave examples of you know if you're updating your blog or if you're up updating an old article um, you have to change the dates you know if you've changed more than 50% of the content change the published date uh, if you've just updating the title or a link or two change the date modified you know in the search for fresh content you know Google wants to be able to uh, rank you know, content that it knows its webmasters are defining as new or updated. Um, the Speakable came out last summer. Uh, the data set, if you have a large data set, you can actually allow people to use Google to search inside of the data set. Um, Facts QA page and how to, uh, this was rolled out in the summer of last year. Um, basically, you can mark up your content so it appears well. Um, if anybody's ever searched on Stack Overflow, uh, this is how Stack Overflow is getting a lot of their answers into Google search results. Um, their markup's pretty cool. Uh, top places list just showed up out of nowhere. Uh, job posting, so if you uh, mark up your job posting right, it can show up on the right hand side. Uh, live stream, if you tell Google uh, when you start live streaming, when you've stopped, or if you have it planned. Um, there's another QA page link. Um, and But Jim, there's so much, how do you keep up? Uh, the Google Webmaster Central blog is probably the number one place to look at all this. When they publish a post, and it's not very often, it's like once a month, uh, twice a month tops, um, it's important, like they're speaking from like the Google search team to the webmasters you know you should be paying attention this is where they have announced uh, like page speed as a ranking factor or HTTPS is a ranking factor like these are major announcements that like make sea changes on the internet you know like they made that HTTPS announcement and what like half of the internet became secure in you know six months um, Google, the company, has a blog called The Keyword. Um, sometimes things will trickle up from the search and the webmaster team into that, and when it does, that's really, really, really important. Um, but there is a lot of other, you know, Google as a company news in there. Um, Pending.schema.org. Uh, Schema.org is open source, uh, so they actually publish these things uh, as they go. So if enough people have agreed upon it and it's made it through the issue queues, uh, they will post new things. So like this is, if you're paying attention to this, the speakable stuff came out here a couple weeks before Google announced it on their blog that they were ready to consume it. And then even before that, um, for real open source uh, data nerds, there's the uh, issue queue on GitHub. So all of the things that go into schema.org are 
uh, work done in the open and you can actually go in and see here's an employee from Google making this proposal or asking somebody else to change this just a little bit um, so like I don't look at that all the time but it's cool to just like go in there and check it out sometimes so implementing schema.org in WordPress um, WordPress has plugins. I don't know if you knew about this, but <laughs> um, again, I'll just go over the Yoast example. Um, they have your basic, you know, like kind of what every site needs. Um, so you can go in and you can set yourself up as a company or a person um, where your logo is, um, where your same as uh, profiles are. Um, so here's all your Facebooks, Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest, that kind of thing. Um, that's where it, it kind of stops. There's another plugin called Schema, and I looked around, like, there's a, a dozens of these too, and like some are like WooCommerce specific or, uh, you know, this kind of site specific. Uh, the Schema plugin I found, and it's just called Schema, uh, seemed pretty well. Out of the box, it had a lot of good stuff um, for. Uh, content type specific or like specific pages so like installing it it gave you articles and then these article types so like blog news article tech article scholarly article you know give you like the big six right out of the box so you could say your blog post is one of these um, the blog schema for a blog page on your site uh, breadcrumbs list for breadcrumbs a collection page for your category pages about you know tell it which is your about page on your site it would put the about markup same for contact page and puts the person schema on the author archive like this is great for like out of the box you know get you a lot of like what a basic WordPress site would need um, again it kind of crosses with uh, Yoast it gives you all the default ones um, like here we had the select the about page or the contact us page um, it allows you to set a publisher logo um, mark up the breadcrumbs uh, objects comments videos uh, and I think there was even a setting in there uh, to say if you're using Yoast it will or won't do these things um, I'll enable site search links uh, where it was really cool is that you can add schemas to custom post types. So if you've made schema, you know, your own custom post types that this is an article of news and this is an article of blog and this is a resource or something else, you can come in here and define or take, apply what they have to your own custom post types and you can even extend this with small little plugins like they have examples on their site where you can make your own plugin that extends it and you could add your own schemas in there uh, this what the detail pages looks like um, basically you set up a article at the top um, which type it is and then down at the bottom you can set your fields from your WP post meta in this case we're saying like my Yoast title and my Yoast meta description should be put into the schema article um, a simple way is like say you just have one page or you just want to stick some uh, small business office hours or uh, opening hours in there yeah you can just stick JSON LD in a widget and put it on a page pretty easy to do and there are uh, cool tools all over the place that help you make your own structured data so in this case Google has a structured data markup helper uh, you can choose website or email um, email structured data is pretty cool too you can actually you know set times and airplanes like that's how your email app knows what time your plane is taking off um, but yeah you can start here and say I want article and you know start tagging or uh, enter the URL it'll actually go to your page and look for pieces of content and you know once you're done testing this tool you can basically just grab that snippet stick it in your site
Uh, again, uh, like the early days of the internet, you can do it in your theme layer. Um, you know, basically just take your PHP variables and stick it into JSON LD as you see fit or inline. Um, at the agency I work at, most of the uh, sites use advanced custom fields. It's another plugin that gives you more and more power into making your own WordPress site uh, as custom as you want. Uh, this is a link to a great article by Pascal Clau, uh, where we're going to uh, step through it, uh, but making your own schemas using advanced custom fields and injecting it into the head using WP head. Um, so basically, you make an options page for your admin, um, going in, in this case, it's called general options. Uh, this is what the options looks like. You create the fields, and on this options page, you know, let's put a logo in and a photo of the building and a local business, um, what time they're open, who's the contact information, the address, all of that stuff. Uh, and then we pull that those fields out using this snippet of uh, custom code. And in the end, in this case, you're taking it and put, wrapping it in JSON. And then in the end, this is what the output would look like. Um, wrapped in JSON LD, my store, my store, the address, the image, going all the way down. So that's a pretty cool article on CSS tricks to check out. Ah, once we have gotten everything in there, we can test. So, actually, final test here. Um, Google's structured data testing tool uh, allows you to, it goes in scrapes, put in the URL, it goes in scrapes. You can also just like paste markup in here. So like if you're using a, some kind of validator or you're making your own, um, or just like doing that WP head thing and working local, you can grab it, put it here. It'll scrape it and tell you what kind of structured data we have. Uh, Canopy's website is a WordPress site. Um, WordPress out of the box has this piece of structured data called H entry. I don't know if everybody's ever seen that in there. Um, basically, it was kind of like a RDFA, an old thing initially to define uh, what the site was about. I think it pulls in like the site description here. Uh, and then the website. So this is what the actual JSON LD translates into. Uh, it's a website type. Uh, it has an ID, a URL. The ID makes it unique. The URL, the name. On this site, we have a potential action. This action is a search action. The entry point is canopystudios.com, question mark, s equals. And then we give it this variable, curly braces, search term string. And then underneath this, we have the query input, and we say the search term string is actually what we're looking for. So that's how Google basically knows how to search every WordPress site in existence. Um, so if you change your search page from question mark s equals, you know, you need to change this markup too. And the Wall Street Journal examples again. Um, not as in-depth, but uh, we'll take a look at their homepage. This is where all that business ex uh, example is. So like, there's the web page, uh, that it's the section is the homepage, the Wall Street Journal. They have a thumbnail URL, a headline, uh, description, keywords. And the article, yeah, that doesn't help. Um, the article gets even more depth. The, you know, they have the web page information at the top. They have an image object, a person, the organization. Um, this one here is kind of cool. If is it accessible for free? It's false, and they can say where the paid wall content is, um, and then the date and other info at the bottom. And then the author has his own uh, setup too. So they're saying that this is the web page of Nick Timorov, and um, you know his description, 
what the URL is. He probably has an image there too. Um, so there's like, you, you know, different types of pages and then the different schemas that go along with it. And that one's just cute. Okay, so like I said, the slides are up online. You can follow all the links and check it out. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at the Jim Birch and other places too. And I'd be more than happy to answer any questions or talk to anybody or help anybody about metadata and schema data. How do you decide where to start and where to end? Like, there's so many different schemas for different things. Yes. And it seems like it can just nest and nest and nest and nest. How do you uh, decide what flow from the markup perspective? Sure. At? Uh, yeah, my favorite as I was like scrolling through that big schema list is that there's a bed schema that you can define a bed and it's just like who would define a bed? Oh, well, like maybe a hotel would define a bed on their listing or somebody. Um, I think the most important thing is who's going to consume the data and who's your competition in that arena, that space, and what are they doing? So like, you know, that top five I showed like what every website should have. That's like everything should have like Yoast in the schema like gives you that out of the box. That should be done. Um, the next step is where do you want to play and who are you playing against and how deep do you want to go? Um, that Google search gallery tells you what the big ones are now, but like staying on the cutting edge is also going to help moving forward. So like say you were a hosting company you know, you may want to like check out what I don't know. <laughs> uh, you may want to see like who's you know, again, like, you know, keyword analysis in Google, like and what they're ranking for. It's not going to always show you the case, but that would be the, the great best place to start. Yeah, that's always uh, in the past when I looked at structured data and schema and stuff, it's, it's so much. It's hard to know what to get. Yeah. Here. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, and it's like kind of like uh, content modeling for your website. Like, so if you're doing advanced custom fields and custom post types, you know, that's the time to kind of think about what schemas these are in also. Um, but if, yeah, if nobody's consuming that information, then it's not worth the time and money to dive that deep. If you have a regular WordPress website and you're using like Yoast, mm -hmm. uh, what percentage of the way are you to good enough with, with just like Yoast or something for meta schema. So that gets you uh, right off the bat of those big five. I mean, if you fill it out correctly and test it to make sure it's it's done. Um, so yeah, if you're just creating articles or, or blogs, you know, chances are you getting your company information in there is going to be good enough. Um, and I'm sure the next release will have that date modified and date published updated in there since that just came out and Yoast is releasing more and more new releases all the time. They release releases, updates, they release updates all the time. Um, yeah, it's pretty good. I would say that in combination with like that schema plugin is kind of like the next step. Yeah. Um, I'd say one thing like, I don't know if there's any like WooCommerce people or you're selling stuff online, like that is the next level. Like if you're doing that, you're definitely gonna get into like the product, the prices, the reviews. Um, do, do you know if the Yoast WooCommerce add-on for the Yoast SEO, is, does that do that? I don't you? know, I don't know. I did find in my research that there were a lot of premium plugins targeting WooCommerce WordPress sites that, yeah, they wanted to pay you 50 bucks because theirs were, you know, this widget versus that widget. Like they really knew this type of WooCommerce site versus that. So, but yeah. The when you get into the premium plugin marketplace, I get a little lost. Um, what's the best practice for some JSON stuff representing? So, for example, if you're dealing with a local business, should you just include that information on the homepage or on the location page, or should it be site-wide? Um, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, usually the website schema I would do on 
the main page. Um, yeah, I, I don't think it would hurt to have the organization schema everywhere, um, but at least on the home page. Okay. Yeah. And you also mentioned a specific page, like a contact page, about a page. Is that a separate schema or is that part of the website? It's, uh, they're like uh, sub-schemas of the web page schema. So it's web page, and then there's a type of contact page, and there's a type of about page. Um, a type of fact page or how-to page. Um, so each of those are like slightly granularly different. So on the contact page, you would include that? Yeah. Okay. So that's going to have specific fields for whatever it is that should be on a contact page or a robot page. So that way, if it sees the organization, it sees the website, it sees the organization, then it knows this is more detailed about than just the description that I got in the organization schema. All right, thank you very much. Oh, and I, I have a, a Lego Uncle Jim stickers if anybody wants any. So my nephew made him for me when I was, when he was 11, not when I was 11. <laughs> um, he said, Lego Uncle, or Uncle Jim, I made you as a Lego, so then we travel around and take pictures of him and then he likes to be in presentations and then I started doing these kind of things and realized that computer people like stickers <laughs> so I made some stickers too. <laughs> <laughs>